Hello there. In this video, we're going to look at rotary encoders with the Arduino. And in particular, we're going to focus on how to get to a code that works reliably. All right, so let's first see um, how you wire these things up. A rotary encoder has three pins. Uh, you might see some that have five, like uh, the one I'm showing here in the camera. Uh, this, this one has three on one side and two on the other. Uh, that typically is when there's a push button on it as well. So the push button will have two pins and then the rotary encoder itself will have three pins. Uh, so if we um, connect it, we'll connect the middle pin to the ground of the Arduino. And the first pin, you call that ENCA, uh, uh, and this third pin, that's ENCB, you connect to two pins of the Arduino, and those pins will need uh, interrupt support. We'll talk about that later. So for the Arduino Uno, you want to go ahead and connect it to pin number two and pin number three. Uh, then we'll configure the Arduino Uno in a certain pin mode um, that is called input pull-up. And that will basically add um, a, a pull-up resistor uh, so that the um, output of pin 3 and the output of pin 2 are basically high, so VDD. You could also put that pull-up resistor externally, uh, but this just saves you a bit of hardware. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that. And then in essence, um, so the pin 3 is, uh, is high when there's no... Uh, connection um, to the ground and of course goes then low if there's a connection to the ground. Now let's have a look at the rotary encoder itself. Basically as you rotate the rotary encoder it connects pin A and C A and E and C B to the ground independently and from that the Arduino can tell whether you're turning to the right or to the left and we'll see how that uh, really works in the next slide. Before I go there though I just want to make uh, one comment and that is that some of you might have um, these uh, rotary encoders connected on a, uh, a small PCB, like the one you see over here on the right. In that case, ENCA is going to be uh, the uh, pin that reads clock, CLK, and ENCB is going to be the pin that reads DT. And all the way on the left, you see the ground that obviously is your middle pin that's the ground. Um, so just for the ones who have that PCB, you know how to wire it up as well. Okay, as you start um, now rotating that rotary encoder, what really happens? Okay, so um, we see here uh, the rotary encoder itself and um, with the voltages of ENC A and ENC B, so output A and output B. And as we start to rotate now the rotary encoder, um, it first connects the output A, ENC A, to the ground. So we can see this from high going to low. Um, as we rotate, then the second output, ENCB, also goes to ground. And then we see output A come up again and output B come up again. And that's one click, basically. So these, typically these rotary encoders will, will click as you turn them. And so with every click, it does one of those cycles. Um, and as you then continue to rotate, you see um, that's the, the pattern you get. So always ENC A first goes to the ground and then ENC B go, goes to, uh, to ground. Uh, in this example here, I used six uh, pulses uh, in one full rotation, as you can see here, one through three, four, five, six. Um, but most products will have 12 or 24 pulses per rotation. Um, so uh, it just makes the, um, the, the figure a bit clotted. That's why I only uh, use six over here. And so the, uh, between the, the clicks, the, the rest positions are where the arrows are, arrows are shown uh, over here. Now you can test this behavior yourself as well. Just take two LEDs and uh, connect them to ENC A and ENC B as shown here on the left. You should use a resistor of about 100 ohms to maybe at 500 ohms, doesn't really matter. Just take whatever you have in uh, series with the LED to limit the current and make sure the LED isn't damaged. And then uh, you can connect this to a, a voltage, a supply of 3.3 .3 or 5 volts. 
Uh, as you can see on the right, I just took uh, a voltage, uh, the five volt voltage from the Arduino Mega that you see over there. And if I now turn uh, the uh, the potty that you see over here and I turn, turn really, really slowly, you can see that first one LED lights up, uh, then both light up, then the second LED lights up, and then we're at the next rest position. So this is exactly the behavior uh, that uh, we saw um, on the explanatory slides just now. Uh, the one thing though is that this is the inverse way. So in the rest position, the LEDs are off, whereas the uh, Arduino will see in the rest position that both um, ENCA and ENCB are logical high. So, uh, but nonetheless, the, the behavior is exactly identical. First one goes on, then the other one, the other one goes off. And if I turn the other way around, you'll see that First, the other LED goes on, then both go on uh, and uh, they go off um, in reverse order again. So that way you can see which direction you're turning. All right, now I already mentioned that for the code that we're going to discuss to work reliably, you really need to make sure that you connect the uh, ENCA and ENCB to ports that support interrupts. And so please, whatever hardware you're using, an Arduino Uno or ESP32 or Arduino Mega, look at the pinout and, and make sure that uh, interrupt support is provided. On the ESP32, it's going to be easy. All the ports will support uh, interrupts, uh, but on the Uno, a set port two and three will be fine for you. Um, uh, but that those are the only two ports, I believe, that you can use. And on the Mega, um, also there, you need to make sure uh, that it does support uh, interrupts. Now, if you look online, you're going to find uh, a lot of different implementations for rotary encoders, and some work better than others. Um, the main reason for that is that uh, a good code will take into account uh, th th that so-called debouncing is required. Now, what does that mean? If I turn a rotary encoder like that um, and I look at the oscilloscope, what the uh, ENCA uh, trace looks like, then you're going to see something like this, where um, you see the time on the x-axis and the... Uh, um, voltage on the y-axis. And if you look at it like this, it seems like it, th there's a steep transition. But if you now zoom in, you can see that there's actually quite a lot of noise before it really goes from the off state to the on state. And uh, so this noise you can get rid of with hardware. Uh, there's some sites that suggest you should just use capacitors. Uh, but that doesn't really solve the problem. Uh, a capacitor can be used to reduce some of the noise, but it won't really work reliably. Or if you use too big a capacitor, uh, then you, can't, you cannot uh, rotate your rotary encoder fast anymore. Uh, the only real way to get rid of this kind of noise in hardware is to use a Smith trigger, uh, but that adds quite a lot of hardware. And so in this example, in the code we're going to discuss today, uh, we're not going to, to do this debouncing, as you call it, in hardware. We're going to uh, discuss a, a software with the state machine where we take the uh, input from ENCA and ENCB, and thereby uh, we don't need hardware debouncing to get to a reliable code. All right, so let's dive in. So as usual, I posted the code online. Uh, just go to my repository um, and in repositories, you'll find a rotary encoder. And then we'll go ahead and download that code. And we'll go ahead and open up the INO file. So let's have a look at the implementation in detail and run it um, uh, on the Arduino so we can see how it works. So first of all, I'd like to acknowledge Oleg Mazarov, who made the implementation, the first implementation of this code. And I also refer to his website and also another one that has a similar code available. Okay, so initially we go ahead and define the pins that we're going to use. Uh, I have a small Uno here that we're going to try it on. So then ENCA is going to be pin number two and ENCB is going to be pin number three or vice versa. 
So next we see here uh, last increment uh, read time and decrement read time and also pause length. These three are variables that are used so that if you turn the rotary knob really fast, um, that uh, it goes uh, with steps of 10 instead of steps of one. Otherwise, if you need to go over, let's say 200 uh, steps, you need to rotate quite a lot to go to one to 200. If you go fast and you get steps of 10, it's a lot more user friendly. Uh, but we'll look at, into that later on. Um, then there's the counter. That's the actual counter that we're changing with the rotary encoder starts at zero. And already we're at the setup. We first define the, uh, the pin modes. Uh, as I already mentioned, we're going to use input pull up to make sure that um, the two pins we're using here are always uh, logical high. Then uh, we're going to um, call this attach interrupt function. Now the attach interrupt function uh, basically says whenever you see a change uh, on the um, ENCA or ENCB pin, then please run the function read encoder. So if we scroll down, we see here a function that's called read encoder. And so every time uh, a change is detected, that function is run. We'll look at what that function does later on. Then we go to the main loop of the program, um, and that is actually remarkably simple. Uh, so in the main loop, um, we just say, Whenever the counter changed, then uh, let's print it. And that's the only thing we do because all the um, reading of the rotary encoder and, and, and detecting changes are taken care of by that read encoder function. So let's have a look at that into detail. And for that, I made a few slides with the code in it. And so let me transition to that. All right, so we're going to have a look at the read encoder uh, function in detail. Now, uh, you'll see that there's a few variables here in the beginning that are defined uh, with static uint8 and static int8, etc. Uh, the static just means that uh, it's defined the first time the function is run, uh, but then afterwards, these are just variables that are uh, standard variables that are used. So you could also define these on the top of the program, but this really keeps them with the function. So we'll focus now on uh, the old AB variable. Now, in the beginning, that old AB variable is going to be three. What does it mean? Old AB basically means the current state. Whenever uh, a change in the pin state is detected, this read encoder program is run. And so we'll read out the new state. But at that point in time, whatever we store in memory is the old state. That's why it's called old AB. And we start here with old AB is three. Now, why three? Uh, well, if you look at three as a binary sequence, then uh, old AB basically is zero, 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 one, one because as I already explained in the beginning, ENCA and ENCB are logical high when the uh, uh, rotary encoder is in rest position. And the program assumes that uh, you are in the rest position when the Arduino is booted, that you're not actively turning the knob while you're booting the Arduino. So then we, uh, in that case, if it's in a rest position, um, ENCA and ENCB both are uh, logical high, so they're one and one. All right, so the read encoder function now is run whenever the logical state of either ENCA or ENCB is changed. In this position, we'll uh, go clockwise, um, and so we'll go from, um, from the rest position to the right. And um, what happens then is that ENCA first transitions from one to zero. So what, what we do now is that first, uh, these one, one is shifted two times to the left. So we keep that state by shifting it two times to the left, like this. Uh, and so old AB now becomes uh, zero, 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 one, one, zero, zero. Then we read in the current state and uh, the current state is that ENCA is zero um, and ENCB is one. So uh, then it becomes uh, zero, 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 one, one, zero, one. So in decimals, that would be 13. 
So the trick now is to use a state machine called ENC states. Um, this is an array of values, uh, and you can see that array definition over here. So it's 16 values in the array with either one or minus one. And we use that to basically uh, count this parameter in val that starts at zero um, to count these um, states from zero, one, two, three, four. Then you know you're going to the right or um, the other direction, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. And you know that the rotary encoder is, is rotated to the left. Uh, so we, um, how this now works in detail is that um, we have here uh, the decimal representation of the current state is 13. So we look into the array and then item number 13 in the array is one. So our ENC val is increased with one. We know now that we shifted from our rest position one to the right. The next time the function is run, uh, the, both the ENC A and ENC B will have become zero. So in that case, um, we uh, now first, of course, start with shifting the uh, previous state two times to the left. We now read in the new um, state of ENC A and B like that and uh, then um, we want to look into our lookup table again but you notice that the lookup table is only 16 values and we have now value 52 here but um, if you look closely here this is where we use the lookup table right enc states um, and then position number old ab we have here an end function with 0x 0f and so 0x0f is a hexadecimal representation of um, a byte, and that byte is uh, four times zero and then four times one. So if you do that end function uh, with um, the um, old AB, then the result will be that the first four bits will be zero, and then the last four bits will be whatever old AB is. And in this case, it will be 0100 at the end, and that is a binary representation of uh, four. So again, we look into our uh, lookup table and at um, position number four, there is uh, a one. So our ENC value is increased uh, with yet uh, one more. So we're now at two, um, identifying that we are uh, moving the encoder again to the right. Then the next state is where ENC A becomes high um, and so the same procedure, we shift it to, to the left, we read in the current ENC A and ENC B states, um, then um, again do this end function. The decimal representation now is two, so we look into the uh, array and can raise the ENC value with one more to three. Um, and then finally, um, when we get to the next rest position, uh, we have the same procedure, shift um, the old AB twice again to the left, uh, read in the current state. Um, the decimal representation now is 11, and uh, we can increase ENC value one more. And ENC value now is four. Okay, so let me briefly switch back to the uh, actual code, because uh, that was a, a PowerPoint just now. Um, and so um, whenever uh, ENC value um, is higher than three or lower than minus three, uh, then uh, we know that we went from one rest position to the next rest position or the previous one, and we need to update the counter. Um, so here, the situation where the encoder value is larger than three. Um, so in that case, we increase the counter with one. Um, and here, the case where the encoder value is smaller than minus three, and we decrease the counter with one. Um, I already explained that um, in addition we added some functionality that if you rotate fast that we increase the change value with a factor of 10 uh, and that's the simple uh, statement over here. We briefly checked the last time that uh, a uh, decrease or uh, above an uh, increase happened and if that is smaller than the pause length then the change value is increased with a factor of 10. Obviously this is not perhaps uh, so beautiful as hard-coded I'll make that uh, a little nicer in the code online. 
Um, and uh, yeah, the uh, counter value is then changed with a factor of 10. And that's pretty much it. So uh, let's give the code a spin. I did notice that my Arduino Uno was toast. So uh, instead I just took now a, a, a mega that I had laying around. Um, I checked the uh, pin compatibility and in fact also pin two and three can be used on the mega. This actually is quite a good site. I'll uh, put it in the link down below as well, where you could see the, uh, the digital, digital pins with interrupts for the individual boards. Um, so here's the, the Mega uh, 2560 that I'm using, where you can see that uh, pin 2, 3, 18, 19 can be used. All right, so uh, let's program this thing. And to test now if it works, uh, just open up the serial monitor. And so I connect to this, you see the rotary encoder to my Arduino. Uh, and if I just uh, turn it, you can see that uh, it increases or decreases if we go the other way. And if we go fast, as I said, uh, it'll take steps of 10 instead of uh, one. So you can um, change the value quite quickly uh, by rotating fast or uh, very accurately uh, by rotating slowly. All right, hope this was helpful for you. Let me know in your comments down below what the project is you're working on and uh, see you in the next video.